is up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about the top 10 most profitable cars for Turo. If you're somebody who is curious about the Turo platform, if you're interested in starting a Turo side hustle or you're interested in growing your own fleet, then this video will be incredibly valuable for you because I'm going to be laying out my top 10 most profitable vehicles, how much they cost, what you need to know about them, and how you can get started. So let's get started. Today is Top 10 Tuesday, and for those of you who don't know what Top 10 Tuesday is, this is the day of the week in which I break down ways to make money, invest your money, start a side hustle, and more. And in today's Top 10 Tuesday, I want to dedicate it to Turo and how you can start your own Turo side hustle and make a lot of money doing it. Now, whenever it comes to starting a Turo side hustle, specifically which cars do you buy in order to start your Turo side hustle, there are tons of videos out there. There are a lot of resources out there that will point you in the right direction of which cars to buy and which ones to avoid. But the big problem is, is that more often than not, these videos and resources are talking about Turo cars in the context of revenue, not in the context of profit, even if they oftentimes use these terms interchangeably. This is actually one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to Turo and just business in general. Whenever people use the term profit and revenue interchangeably as if they are the same thing, whenever that is simply not the case. Revenue is the amount of money that is brought in from your side hustle, but profit, specifically net profit, is the amount of money that you have in your pocket after expenses are taken into account. And when it comes to Turo, these two numbers can be drastically, drastically different depending on what type of cars you own. And I think that this is incredibly important to talk about because there is far too much misinformation out there about how much you can realistically make on Turo with cars that cost a ton. So that's why I decided to make this video. I wanna break down my top 10 most profitable cars that will actually put money in your pocket. This list is going to be organized from 10 to one, 10 being the least profitable of the 10, number one being the most profitable, and they are all going to be based off of not only my own experience, but also the research that I've done, as well as the hosts that I've talked to as well. If you stick around until the end of the video, I will be giving a $25 off coupon code to my car sharing masterclass, which is my online course you can take in order to learn my exact business model of how I run my own Turo fleet. And so with that, and without further ado, let's dig into the video and let's start off with number 10, which is a Jeep Wrangler. Now, the Jeep Wrangler is a car that is included on almost every Turo list that exists on the internet. If you look up online the best cars for Turo, the most profitable cars for Turo, the most popular cars for Turo, you will find a Jeep on every single one of those lists. The reason is, is that the Jeep is a popular car, but it doesn't come without its downsides. You see, there are a few key reasons as to why the Jeep is listed as number 10 on this list rather than higher on this list. And there are other reasons as to why I decided to include it in this list at all, because I was tempted to leave it off entirely. The benefits of the Jeep Wrangler is the fact that it has incredible depreciation. This car does not depreciate. You could buy a 2009 Jeep Wrangler today, rent it out on tour for a couple of years, and then potentially sell it for the same price you bought it for two years down the road. That is something that is a rarity whenever it comes to vehicles, and it makes it a really great car to experiment with Turo with. But the problem with the Jeep is the fact that number one, they are expensive to buy. Number two, they don't have the best reliability and maintenance, even though for some reason Jeep people think that they do. And number three, they are very saturated on Turo. The Jeep Wrangler is an off-roading vehicle, which is great. That's why people buy it, because they like the novelty of the Jeep, and it's something that you don't always get to drive every single day. It also can be a fairly practical car if you are going on vacation with family members or if you have more than two people. But the problem is, is that the nature of the Jeep, I think, fosters abuse. Whenever I owned my Jeep Wrangler, I cannot tell you how many times people took it off-roading and damaged the Jeep in the process. This resulted in thousands of dollars in damage over the course of about two and a half years. Not only the off-roading aspect, but also the removable top as well. The removable top is like the definition of a double-edged sword. The removable top is a novelty that a lot of people look for and look forward to whenever they're renting the Jeep. But the problem is, if you don't own a Jeep, the removable top is a pain to take off. And once you take it off, it's oftentimes difficult to store and it's very easy to damage. And as a result, I had so many renters come back who returned my Jeep and damaged the top in the process. This resulted in potentially thousands of dollars in damage that oftentimes had to go unclaimed because of the fact that it was chalked up to wear and tear. I think that the Jeep Wrangler is an okay 
car for Truro. And really the only reason why I featured it on this list at all is because of the fact that it has great depreciation. It doesn't depreciate, and if you're looking for a safe bet that will be relatively reliable, then I think that the Jeep Wrangler is a good route to go down. But I think that if you decide to go the route of the Jeep Wrangler, I would encourage you to go for a 2009 or 2010 year model that has about 100,000 miles. You can find these for about ten to $12,000. And like I mentioned earlier, you could buy one in this range, you could rent it for a couple of years on Turo, and then you could sell it later on down the road and you could potentially break even on that sale. The Jeep Wrangler will undoubtedly bring in revenue and it will put profit into your pocket. But whenever it comes to the most profitable vehicles out there, there are better ones than the Jeep Wrangler, which is why it's listed as number 10 on this list. Number nine on this list is the most common car in my Turo fleet, and that is a Ford Focus, specifically the year between like 2009 and 2012. Be cautious about going much earlier than 2012, like I would stay away from 2014s because of some notorious transmission issues that these cars can have. Now, whenever it comes to a Ford Focus, these cars are very simple, but very fuel efficient and cost effective vehicles. You can buy these cars for anywhere between $3,000 and $4,000. In fact, the cheapest car I've ever purchased was a Ford Focus that I still have in my Turo fleet, and I purchased it for $2,300 two years ago. Now, these cars aren't lookers. They are very simple. They are very fuel efficient. They are very cost effective, which means that they also do very well on the Turo platform. You can rent these cars out for anywhere between $30 and $35 per day. Now these cars are of course going to be targeted to the Turo renters that are simply using your car to get from point A to point B. Nobody wants to drive a Ford Focus on vacation, but that is perfectly fine. If you can pull those renters that are just looking for a mode of transportation, then you will have plenty of renters to choose from. Now, the one bad thing about the Ford Focus is the fact that they can have reliability issues. In fact, I've had a lot of problems with my Ford Focuses over the years. But the silver lining is that these problems are often fairly easy to fix. They are very easy to work on yourself. So if you're like a DIY YouTube garage mechanic, then you could definitely do your own maintenance on these cars. And the parts to fix these cars are also typically very cheap. Next, we have number eight on this list, which is the big brother to the Ford Focus, and that is the Ford Fusion. Now the Ford Fusion is very similar to the Ford Focus, but it's just larger. It's four doors. It's like a typical sedan four-door SUV. You've seen them a million times. You will see them a million times over. The Ford Fusion is a really great car. It's once again, very simple. You can find them a lot online, but the downside is number one, it is quite a bit more expensive than the Ford Focus. While a Ford Focus you can buy for about $3,500, a Ford Fusion you can't buy for more than like $45,000, $5,000. So it is substantially higher priced in comparison now, similarly to the Ford Focus, the Ford Fusion also has some maintenance issues, but the bright side is, once again, the maintenance issues are fairly easy to fix and they are fairly affordable to fix. Over the years with my Ford Fusion, we've had to replace three of our end links, we've had to replace suspension components, we even had to do a full AC rebuild, and yet this car continues to pay for itself over and over again. The Ford Fusion is simple, it is basic, but it's a great Turo car. The only downside is that over the years, as used car prices have begun to climb, the Ford Fusion has been climbing with it. And while at one point in time you could find a Ford Fusion for about $4,500, now you can find a decent one for under six. So no, I do think that this is a really profitable car, and I think it's a great buy for any Turo fleet. I do think that you have to pay very close attention to the price that you pay for these vehicles, because I personally wouldn't pay more than $6,500 for a decent Ford Fusion. Number seven on this list is one that physically pained me to not include as number one. And if you guys have seen this YouTube channel before, you probably know which one this is. And that is a Toyota Yaris. Now, I love Toyota Yaris's. I love them so much. They are one of my favorite cars. If I didn't have two dogs that were pretty large and could have fit into a Toyota Yaris, I would totally daily drive a Toyota Yaris. Toyota Yaris's are very simple, very cheap Toyota products. They come in both two doors and four doors. They come in both sedan and hatch versions. And my personal favorite is the two-door Toyota Yaris hatch. The fact is Toyota Yaris's are very cheap, they are incredibly reliable, and they are really solid performers day in and day out. In fact, I have consistently made about $600 per month in net profit for my Toyota Yaris's over the years, which for a car that I purchased for less than $3,500 is a huge, huge win. 
Now, there are a few reasons as to why I included the Toyota Yaris as number seven, and I didn't include it as like number one on this list. Number one is the fact that the Toyota Yaris is very, very basic, and the basicness of this car is something that is not for everyone. This car drives a bit rough. It feels like you're driving a go-kart on the highway, and for some people, this is simply not ideal. They don't want to be doing that. Number two is the fact that they are almost entirely manual, at least the cheap ones are. You can get automatic transmission Yaris's, which are the ones that I have, but when it comes to locks, windows, mirrors, or anything else in the vehicle, it is all manual. In fact, my Toyota Yaris that I rent out on Turo still has those old school 90 windows that you have to manually wind up. This means that almost all of my renters who rent my Toyota Yaris are looking for something cheap and are not looking for something that is inherently comfortable. This means that you could end up alienating a huge portion of your renters because of the fact that you're taking everybody who wants to drive something a bit more luxurious or a bit more comfortable out of the equation. Number six on this list is the luxurious cousin to the Toyota Yaris, and that is the Toyota Corolla. Now the Toyota Corolla has a lot of benefits. Number one is it is the comfortable, luxurious cousin of the Yaris. It is for those types of people that aren't looking for the cheapest ride out there, but they are looking for something cheap, reliable, and economical. That's where the Toyota Corolla could come in. The Toyota Corolla has all of the creature comforts that we have grown used to. They typically come with automatic locks, automatic windows, automatic mirrors, and things like that, which is a huge plus side. And they don't feel quite like a go-kart like their Yaris cousin. But the problem is Toyota Corollas are significantly more expensive than a Toyota Yaris. They oftentimes are priced at about $7,000 versus a Yaris, which you could find for about $3,500. And in today's used car market, Toyota Corollas are closer to 10. But the positive is, is that you can buy a 2010, 2011 Toyota Corolla and rent it out for about $40 per day, which is significantly higher than what you could price a Toyota Yaris at. Next, we have number five on this list. Now, number five on this list is one that is a 50-50 shot for me, and it's something that I debated on leaving off of this list entirely. But the reason why I decided to put it on is because of the cost of entry for this vehicle, and that is a Hyundai Sonata. Now, Hyundai Sonatas have really become nice over the years. I feel like Hyundai went from being a pretty low-end brand to being something that is pretty eye-catching in the matter of about 10 to 15 years. But the problem with Hyundai Sonatas is the reliability issues. Now, let's first talk about the pros of a Sonata. First and foremost is the price. A Hyundai Sonata can't be beat for price. They are very, very cheap to get into and you get a lot for the price. While with the Toyota Yaris, if you buy one for $35 to $4,000, you are getting manual locks, you're getting manual windows, you're getting manual mirrors, you're getting cloth seats. With a Hyundai Sonata, you could buy that exact same car for the same price, but you'll get a lot more bang for your buck. But now for the downside of the Hyundai Sonata. In my experience, a car like a Ford or a Toyota, they can take an extent of abuse and still do well and still not have a ton of problems. But the same oftentimes cannot be said with a Hyundai product. If you could find a Hyundai that was maintained really well, then I think that it is a really, really solid buy. But if you find one that has a lot of signs of not being well maintained, then that could be indicative of major issues going on down the road. I like the Hyundai, and I think that if you can find one that is a good car, then you are golden, and you will inevitably make a lot of money from that car. But if you find one that does have issues, like some of the ones that I have, then you are going to be sinking a lot of money into that car, and more often than not, it's not worth it. Number four on this list is a car that has done extremely well for me on the Turo platform, and that is a Honda Accord. Now, you could also clump a Honda Civic into this category as well. Hondas are very reliable. They have a lot of the comforts and luxuries that you expect from a modern car, for example, leather seats, automatic locks, Bluetooth, and more. But the problem with Honda Accords is that they can be pretty expensive. It is it's very difficult to find a Honda Accord that is a reasonable year with a reasonable amount of mileage for less than $7,000. But if you could find one in this price range that is eligible to rent on Turo, then you could easily rent it for between $30 and $40 per day. Next is number three on this list, and this is one that I actually recently just added to my own Turo fleet, but so far I've been really, really happy with the result, and after looking at other cars that are listed on Turo, this car can be a pretty big money maker, and that is a Mazda 2. Now, a Mazda 2 is an egg-shaped car. They come in either two-door or four-door variants, and I really like the way that they look. I have a four-door lime green Mazda 2 that has only been on the Turo platform for a couple of weeks, but it's been performing really well. Mazda products don't have the same reputation as like Honda and Toyota, but they are fairly reliable vehicles, and they are pretty cheap, all things considered. You can buy a Mazda for between $45 and $5,500, and you can find that in that price range that will then qualify to 
to be listed on Turo. You can rent a base model Mazda 2 out for between $30 and $40 per day on Turo. Now the reason why I listed the Mazda 2 as number three on this list is really because of the price for the vehicle and what you get for that price. I think that the Mazda is a huge bang for your buck and you get a lot for the money that you pay for it. It isn't quite as cheap as the Yaris, but it isn't as bare bones as the Yaris either. And you get a lot of the creature comforts that people look for in a vehicle without having to pay a premium price for it. Now we are down to the top two in this top 10. And with that, let's dig in to number two, and that is a Toyota Prius. Now, this is another one that I don't have in my own fleet personally, but it is one that has been a tried and true vehicle for the Turo platform. Number one, because of the Toyota name and the reliability that comes along with it. Number two, is the size. It's the perfect size for a small family or a group of friends to drive around in. And number three is the fact that it is incredibly fuel efficient. Toyota Priuses do extremely well on the Turo platform. I know a number of hosts that have them. In fact, I know of a host that only has Toyota Priuses and they do very, very well. The problem with Toyota Priuses though is the fact that they are fairly expensive. It is very difficult to find a Toyota Prius that is less than $7,000. In fact, I have a hard time finding any that are less than like eight or $9,000. But once you can find one for the right price, they can run forever. In fact, it isn't uncommon to have Toyota Priuses that are running for 250,000 miles to 300,000 miles miles, if not more, if they're well maintained. But considering the reliability and the maintenance record that a Prius has, it really is a great car to invest in long term, especially if you're somebody that doesn't really want to invest a whole lot of time, energy, and money into maintaining your cars. The Prius is a really easy route to go down. And now for the moment that you've been waiting for, which is number one on this list. Now, number one was chosen for a few different reasons. Number one, because of the fact that it is an affordable car. You can find these cars for about five grand throughout the country and you get a lot of bang for your buck for that price. You can oftentimes find them with cloth or even sometimes leather seating. They have all of the functions that you would expect in a modern car, things like automatic locks, automatic windows, even sometimes Bluetooth. They are a decent sized SUV. They have two rows of seats and a lot of trunk space, perfect for a family or even somebody driving by themselves. And they also have really good reliability. And that is a Ford Escape, specifically a 2009 to a 2012 year model. Now the Ford Escape is a great car for a few different reasons. Number one is the fact that you get a lot of bang for your buck. This car is relatively affordable, especially compared to some of the other cars that we've talked about in this list earlier on. You can very realistically get a Ford Escape for $5,000 and you can rent that exact Ford Escape for between $35 and $50 per day, depending on where you're located. Number two is the fact that this car is good for everyone, whether you are a family, whether you're traveling solo, whether you have a couple of friends with you, this car truly does cater to every single type of renter, which is what I love. And number three is that though it doesn't have the reliability of a Toyota, it does have pretty good reliability and maintenance. And the fact is whenever it does have issues with it, the issues aren't very expensive to fix, which means that there's less costs associated with running this vehicle and you get to keep more money at the end of the day. The Ford Escape has consistent consistently for the last couple of years been the most profitable car in my fleet. Whenever you take into account the price for the vehicle, the revenue that it brings in, and the costs associated with running the vehicle, there is not a car in my fleet that beats the Ford Escape which is why it is number one on this list. Now, ultimately, you guys, I know that this list isn't sexy. I know that none of these cars are dream cars for anybody out there. But the fact is, is that if you're wanting to run a business and you're wanting to run a profitable one, these cars that I've listed here are really great cars to start with. All of these cars are cars that you can run on Turo and actually make money at the end of the month. All cars can bring in revenue, but not all cars can bring in profit. And these 10 that I've talked about today will be great ones to start with if you're looking to make that profit, not just simply bring in the revenue. But with that being said, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, if you have any cars that you think I left off of the list that should have been included into the list, I would love to hear. So make sure to leave a comment down below. If you go to my course, the car sharing masterclass, it will be linked down in the description below as well as in the pinned comment section as well. If you go to that course and if you use the code top 10, that will give you $25 off of that purchase. So be sure to check that out. And like always, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video.